Hi, Jane. Um, I think when we talked earlier, you said that you were very concerned about people thinking about quality and also about breaking down silos between disciplines to actually get proper fire safety. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Um, well, to be honest, I think the whole thing is about quality. It is, we've, we've sort of lost sight, I think. We've lost pride in what we're producing for people. Um, it has become, building has become a, as a, an asset and it isn't, it isn't something that one takes joy in producing. There are a few companies, of course, we've had one or two of those on the team today who have been absolutely trying to do things better. But there have, for every one of those, probably there are 10 others that don't. And a lot of it, I think, is to do with a, a, a number of, there are a number of reasons for that. One is education. And I don't mean just at school. I mean, um, all parts of the industry need to be educated so that they are able to see their part in developing a good quality building, whether it's a you know, garden shed or whether it's a, an airport. The, the truth is you need to approach it with an impact, an impact, which means you know that for the sustainable future, your building, your outcome, everything is going to be a good quality it's then it's obvious that it means that everybody involved in that has to feel the same way. Um, so in order to get quality, the question is how do we achieve it? Because we've got, we've got quality of design and we hope obviously that um, professionals will do their duty in accordance with their code of conduct and actually provide quality, become the controlling mind that's actually competent to take that role. Um, but the issue is how do you make sure that once you've started a project with a client, that firstly that client understands what you're trying to achieve, which is a quality outcome, a sustainable um, quality outcome. And I don't think those two are mutually exclusive when it comes to fire safety. Fire safety is one component of very many components which need to be considered when you're thinking about making a building um, fit for purpose, um, affordable to construct, affordable to run, safe to uh, construct, safe to maintain and safe for people, as well as being delightful and all the other things you need, but also, fle but also flexibility into the future so that those buildings aren't put up with, an in with a built-in obsolescence, which I think might do very well for, for um, a developer who is only looking to build and then sell on, probably not terribly interested. So there are a number of things I've been thinking about. One is how do we educate people? How do we bring an entire industry together to feel that they need to up their game? Um, and I'm not talking about just a student or trainees, I'm talking about people in the professions now, those who are doing construction work, those who are doing supply work. Um, testing was brought up as a very important point. But that is, we need to reconsider how do we get a better product? And that must be by us all coming together to try and educate each other, to find more trust in working together towards a better outcome. But I do think there are some very specific things. Um, we talked earlier about the golden thread, but actually there is a very simple mechanism, um, which the RIBA has been talking about and I, no, it's a bit of a scary one for a lot of people, but I think when you're doing a project, which is design, construction and management, all with people in mind, not just the people in the building, but the people who are seeing it, walking around it, looking at the context, looking at its life. Um, you need to be able to sign off at least to a design and a construction that works, that's had a golden thread of accountability all the way through it, people have understood, and there is a legacy then of something that's left, which is an understood building, so that at least the firefighters can understand what they would need to get to. So the proposal is that you just marginally extend two roles, principal designer and principal contractor, and those two have to stay with the project, and I think all the way through, through design, through construction, bring in all the other specialists and brilliant people that you need, fire engineers or whomever you need, acoustics, all the rest of it. They should have to sign the building off. 
it's a very, very big responsibility. And actually, to be honest, one thing that you're going to do if you want somebody to sign a building office, pay them properly for it, um, which is another issue. Yes, um, that is another issue. It's, it's a major issue because if you want everything cheap, that means you want you don't want to pay people. Um, and actually, I think you get much better value out of paying people a lot of money and expecting a lot in return. However, so that's one thing. But I do think it might clear up responsibility and accountability through the design, construction and management phase of that building. Um, but I am, as you know, very keen to make sure that we have clarity for regulation. Um, there's no question. We already knew before Dame Judith Hackett did her report that there's an industry out there that is gaming the system for profit. And that has become incredibly obvious. So how do you deal with that? Firstly, you need the government to understand that it is important for the legacy of the country. But that needs resources. I don't think it's going to be very easy looking at the, the immediate future. But we do need government to look carefully at regulation, prescriptive baseline regulation. It puts a very level playing field for everybody to build up from, literally, physically, and, and uh, if you don't have it, it's going to be a problem. But then there's also health and safety. Um, I think the executive needs to have more power. Um, more people need to be available to assess how you're doing. And we also need to have the fire brigades much better resourced on the ground because at the moment that they've been there, um, I think they've had some ridiculous amount of cuts, like 40%, which means all they can do is react to fires. They can't do any of their normal proactive um, work, which I remember as a younger architect, um, having to put your drawings in, in, in front of the local, local fire brigade to say, are we all right on means of escape? Being scared, scared to death, frankly, by what they might say. Um, we, need them, we need them to understand the buildings in their area, to know them, to know where they can get the information from, and, and to know how they might need to fight, fight a fire um, and what the whole process has been. But that's not just new buildings. Um, the, the, the issue that I think about a lot of these discussions is about how do you put up better new buildings. But actually what we're talking about here is retrofit and using existing buildings to do better. Um, and I think that's a, there's a whole area of regulation, education and uh, thought collaborative thought through the industry that needs to concentrate on that thanks very much jane that's fabulous thank you you're welcome thank you